Hello and welcome to a new video about electrical controls. This time we are going to talk about control schemes, huh? like we had in pneumatic or hydraulic, that we have drawn a specific control a scheme with symbols and so on. We can do this in electrical controls as well. Some of the symbols we have already we know already from last video. Yeah? So, again we are using symbols. Yeah? And I said, okay, there is this normally closed contact, yeah? there is the normally open contact, yeah? there is the, the, the change contact. Yeah? We have different type of, of, of operation, push button, switches, turning switches. We also have it uh, here with this little triangle. This would be a limit switch for instance. Uh, limit switch and if it's operated, uh, if it's operated, this is closed and there's a little sign. Uh, this is a operated limit switch which is actually normally open contact, but because it's operated, we make this little sign to it. Huh? Then we do have coils. We also know them huh? from the relays we have talked. Yeah? They are might operate contact. Huh? Then there are different type of coils, yeah? magnets. Huh? They might operate Wow, and now we have here the connection eh, between electrical control and hydraulic power part, maybe. Huh? Uh, yeah, I mean, the, the numbers I have to mention. Of course. A1, A2, A1, A2. So there are different combinations simply available. Uh, I also mentioned those. Uh, lamps, LEDs. Uh, then there are the optical, optical feedback. Then there are these horns. There are sirens or bells and sirens uh, with the connections. These are uh, acoustic feedback and so on. Yeah. Then we said there are actuators, there is the motor, maybe an AC motor or maybe a three-phase AC motor. Yeah. Motors. And there are also, we talked about the stuff here. Yeah. There are also proximity switches, which usually are just something like this. Yeah? There is usually a power supply, plus and minus, and there's the switching output of those. Yeah? And the limit switches usually have this sign inside, yeah? and somewhere an indication what this means. Yeah? And if I want to draw a common switch, it will look like this. Yeah? If I want to draw that it is inductivity, I make an inductivity. And if I want to make it as, draw it as an capacitive limit switch, like this one, I will draw a capacitor inside. Uh, proximity switch. There are also then switches which do switch because of something. Yeah? There is a little switch symbol inside, there is the input, and here this might be P, then it's a pressure switch. Okay? So there are a bunch of symbols simply available. And in our scheme, yeah, we just draw how those are connected. Yeah? We only have one issue. Yeah? 
there are several switches, there are several lamps, there are several LEDs. Which one do we mean? Yeah. We talked about this in pneumatics when we said, okay, we're giving those things names and they are not Rudy Carl or whatever. Yeah. They are names with, with a more meaning. Yeah. Technical names. Yeah. So I will usually I give them just a number. Yeah. There are the first letters, so this would here be an S for switch. Yeah. This would be a K for working element, for instance. Yeah. These ones here would be P's yeah, for, for presentation, <laughs> for indicating something. Yeah. So there are several letters defined, yeah, which already give the category. Okay. And if I have, then if I need to specify the category a little bit closer, yeah, if I really want to indicate this as electrical or pneumatic or whatever indication, I can use a follow-up letter. So my name consists of a main letter, always a main letter. If I want or have to specify it a little bit closer the function, I give a second letter, the follow-up letter. Together we have an idea what this element is doing. Aha, this is an indication, an electrical indication. Okay. Ah, this is a switch. Switching electrical parts. Okay. Huh? This is a power part. Aha, this is an electrical motor. Q something. Huh? This, or, these are the letters. Huh? I will attach to this video down in the linked area, I will attach an overview about available letters yeah, for your reference. You, for sure, you don't have to, to know them from the top of your head. However, you should know first, first letter there is telling us the category, second letter is specifying it a little bit closer in more detail. And then if there are more of those things, I have to give them a number. Yeah? Then there are just numbers. So this might be, for instance, S1. Yeah? This might be P5, yeah? because there are four other lamps. Yeah? This is K101. Yeah? They don't need to be sequence. They, if, maybe if it's better yeah, to have them grouped, for instance, I can, I can have, I can start with K100, K101, 102, 103, and then maybe there's an other relay area which have a totally different meaning, I could start there with K200. Okay, then they are already grouped a little bit. So now all things have names. Now we have symbols, we have names, and now we need to connect them to each other in a sort of diagram. Yeah? This time it's called circuit diagram. We are drawing a circuit diagram. In our pneumatic diagrams, we started from the bottom with the power supply, uh, then input elements, then work, uh, processing elements, then the working, then the, 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 the switching elements, and then the working elements. Uh. Here we do it exactly the other way around, from the top to the bottom. Uh. So we have somewhere a line which has power. Uh. This is usually usable usually be usually labeled yeah so let's call it 24 volt dc and we, down there we have somewhere line this is ground yeah? or maybe it's marked with zero volts and in between i can use my elements yeah? for instance if i'm having thing like this this is s1 three, four, this is P1. Hmm? What is this doing? Hmm? Ah, the operation is missing. Hmm? If I'm pushing the button, P1 is lit. If I'm releasing the button, P1 is off. Uh, I mean, hopefully you can understand this. Hmm? Because if you do not understand this, think about it a little bit longer. 
Yeah? This is a lamp, this is a, is a button. If I press the button, it's closed, current can run, lamp is lit. Okay. Now, let's see if we do it like this. Here we have S2, we have S3, yeah? here we have P2. What needs to be happened that P2 is lit? I have to press S2, then the current is coming to here, but here is still open. I have to press S3 also, that we get a connection, and now P2 is lit. So this is an AND operation. Okay, This is an AND operation. I can make an AND with my contacts. So really good. Yeah. Now, let's have a second look. S4, S5. Ooh, the numbers. Ah, let's see. P3. What happens if I press S4? Here, current comes already lit. Huh? What happens if I press S5? Here, current comes already lit. So, regardless if I'm pressing S4 or S5, this is an OR combination. Okay? So, I can do logics with the simple use of of my contacts, okay? I have an AND, I have an OR. Well, a NOT is not very difficult, yeah? Because if I want to have a NOT, yeah, then I will simply use a normally closed contact, yeah? because then it's opening. Okay, so Let's make a two-step two approach. Let's see. Here we have another 24 volt DC, here we have zero volts, and here I will now make it again S1, it's a new plan. Yeah? 3, 4, yeah? A1, A2. This here is K1, okay, and here we have one, two, four. So this is now the input element. This is the processing element. Usually we would expect from our pneumatic drives that the processing element is now at the same the same height, like here. However, yeah, so this is path number one, and here we have path number two. And here, I will now draw it like this. Yeah. Now, what's that? Yeah. What's that? Where is this coming from? I will simply label this with K1. Yeah? Then I know, aha, okay, K1 and K1, this must be a contact of K1. This belongs to K1. Okay? So I can find, based on this, usually if this is on another page, there's even written on which page of the plan, I'm finding this element. Yeah? I can look up there. And here usually we write, where we find this. Yeah? So there we, it's written to in path number two. Yeah? So this, spe 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 this specific contact can be found in path number two and is used there. Yeah? Let's see what is happening there. S1 is pressed, K1 is activated, so K1 will switch. If K1 is switching, P2 
one is lit. Okay? This is direct control. This is indirect control. Yeah? What does it mean? Yeah? This means I can use a tiny, tiny switch here, here tiki, 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 and switch a big, big, big motor. Because I only with this tiny switch I can only I can switch a relay or a contactor, and this contactor will book switch something bigger than which I could never switch directly with my little switchy. Yeah? And there is even more. For instance, if we have it like this, uh, 24 volt DC, is it? One, two, four, this is K1, A1, A2. Up to now it looks pretty much the same, right? S1. Button, three, four, back. We can switch on K1. Yeah? And now I have here, for instance, 110 volt DC. Okay? And with this 110 volt DC, I will switch, for instance, a valve. Here we have K1, this is path number 1, path number 2, this is found in path number 2. Here we have 0 volt, here this is uh, called also 0 volt. Yeah. Now we're switching a relay, okay? And this relay is then not switching only 24 volt, but it's switching a different type of voltage to my valve. Huh? Why do we do this? Huh? Why? Don't we use also here 110 volt? This is simple because if we are using voltage which is above a certain value, so usually 50 volts, yeah, then we need to cover everything. We need there is simply more protective equipment. If we're using 24 volt in our control cabinet, we can leave everything open. 24 volts are not dangerous. Okay? 110 volts are. Yeah? So I try to keep the 110 volts to a minimum and only mount it here, make it here, at the power part. And the rest of the control I do with 24 volts because that's usual and that's safe. In total it's cheaper. Then we are again, this coil needs to be from 24 volt and the switching capacity of the contactor needs to be at least 110 volt and whatever this valve here needs. Okay? So, indirect operation. This is usual. So, we have an AND, we have an OR. If I want to have a NOT here, I simply use the normally closed contact and so on. Yeah? Not and or we have covered memory, huh? storage. Huh? Let's see. I will draw now a little something. Twenty-four volt. Here we. I will make ground. Okay. Now, let's see. Two contacts this time. Two 
this one is S1, yeah. this one is S2, yeah. here we have 3 and 4 and 1 and 2, here we have A1, A2, this here is K1, yeah. so this is path 1, 2, 3, this is used in path 2, this is used in path 3, here we have uh, uh, 1, 1, 1, 2, 1, 4, 2, 1, 2, 2, 2, 4, yeah. this is 1, 1, 1, 4, 1, 2, yeah, see there are quite some numbers, and this is also K1, yeah. and this is 2, 1, 2, 4, 2, 2, now you see, now we are ready, have a little bit more complex switching. Let's think about what is happening. Now I press S1. Let's say it looks that way. Yeah, K1 is not energized, it looks that way. Now I press S1. Book. Yeah, S1 will switch here. This is a normally closed contact. So I do not press S2. So K1 will be energized. If K1 is energized, tuk tuk, P1 is lit eh? because this is tuk. And the other thing which is happening, K1 is switching here on and is bypassing my button here. Eh? Even if I release now S1, K1 holds itself. Eh? So I can release it. K1 is still energized because there is a contact of K1 which will supply K1 itself. Eh? Self-holding. This is a memory. If I press S1, this button press is stored in K1 and will not be erased. So if I press S1 and release it, P1 is still lit. Okay. Now how to erase? If I press S2, book. even since this is closed, it cannot get beyond this button. Okay, so K1 will drop, P1 will, esting dis will, will extinguish, yeah, will disappear. And if I then release S2 again, since K1 is open and S1 is open, K1 is still not energized. So this is turn on, this is turn off, set, reset button of a 1-bit memory. This is a 1-bit memory with contacts. Let's show you a second variant of this, 24 volts. Hmm. Looking pretty, pretty much the same. So there is an S1. Somewhere is my K1. Yeah. And again, I have two contacts with my K1. This is path number one. Here is path number two. A1, A2, 3 and 4. This time S2, I will place S2 here. Here we have 2 and here we have again have it again like this here we have P1 here we have K1 this is also K1 uh, this is used in 2 and 3 like before so here we have 11 and 12 and 14 here we have 21 and 22 and 24 yeah here we have 11 14, 12, and here we have 22, 24, and 21. Okay, now it should be complete. A second variant of this. You see, it's pretty looking the same. Again, yeah, what happens if I press S1? Book, P1 is lit, yeah, because this will be energized. Book, book, turned on, P1, boom, yeah, lit on. Yeah. If I release it, K1, this is energized, 
will bypass here, K1 is holding itself, button press will be stored. If I press S2, then this is interrupted, K1 will drop, P1 will get dark again, and if I release then S2, since K1 is dropped, K1 will never go back. So S1 is again store and S2 is reset. So these two things do exactly the same, right? However, there's one difference. Think if we press both, both buttons the same at the same point in time. This one, yeah? if I press this button and this button, the 24 volts come to here but cannot pass here. So this stays dark. Okay? And this one, if I press this button and this button, 24 volts come up to here. Yeah? So this will be lit. So this is a 1-bit memory with priority to reset, this is a 1-bit memory with priority to set. Okay? We have ANDs, we have ORs, we have memories. Yeah? When we are using uh, time, time relays and so on, yeah, we can do quite some things. Yeah? We can do really, really big electrical control systems. Yeah? And this is how it was done. Yeah? Electrical control systems, huge electrical control systems consists of, of racks and cubicles full of relays. They sounded everywhere you hear. Yeah. Electrical controls. This is how this is working. This is how a circuit diagram looks like. Yeah? You find references to each other and so on. Professional CAD systems, they make it easier yeah, that then you can find K1 and which context is built in where and those references, they are built automatically. Uh, it's absolutely necessary to have it on a more complex, if you have a more complex electrical control to use these CAD systems. Yeah, yeah. electrical controls. Why we are using them and how we are using them will then be covered in the next video. For this time, it's okay that you know now we are using symbols, we are naming the symbols and the circuit diagrams show how the symbols interact and because of this interaction I can have different functions. Next time we are talking about why I am not doing this with valves. Why not? This we are used to up to now. Eh? Eh, we'll talk about this. For this time, thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.